up the eSIM. This is going to take some time, but once you finish that, you can go and enable the eSIM in the settings, in the network settings. It's taking some time. To activate your eSIM, go into settings to turn on GeekSky eSIM. So I can go into settings now. And you already see it even has two because I had it already before I installed it. And if I want to enable GeekSky 2, when I do that, cable net here will be turned off. So I can get started to set up the eSIMs to decide which one is used for what. And for mobile data, I will choose GeekSky. While it's turning on GeekSky, you see cable net is turned off because I can only have one eSIM at a time. And now it's connected. It still, it still needs a bit of time for the eSIM to connect. Okay, so the eSIM is moved from the iPhone to Android and the QR code, in some cases, the existing QR code will work, but if I try to set up the QR code again, the same QR code, it's not going to work because it's one time, one time use. So let's try now. Scanning the same QR code that was already used. It might work in some situation, but this one says it doesn't work because it's already used. So that's great. This QR code is used now and no need to save it. You can generate a new one. If you want to move your eSIM from Android to iPhone back, you can do the same process, but in reverse. So remove from Android, generate a new QR code, add to iPhone. Pretty simple. And if you want to remove this eventually, I can turn it off simply, tap turn off, and then I have to choose which SIM card is used. And there's only one SIM card now, so I could turn on the cable net SIM card, then I can decide which is the default for calls and mobile data and text messages. If you want to remove an eSIM from your Android phone, it's really much easier to turn it off, disable it, so you can use it later in case you change your mind or if you are using a plan temporarily, you might use it later. You can save it here. You can save multiple eSIMs and you can enable them one by one. You can only have one eSIM enabled at a time, but that's just good enough. I hope this helps you see how you can move your eSIM from your iPhone to Android. I believe it's much easier to use a physical SIM card. With a physical SIM card, you take the SIM card out from the iPhone, put it in the Android, and that's all. But in America, for example, now phones, iPhone and the Google Pixel phone, they don't have a SIM card, so the physical SIM card is gone. It's only eSIM. In those situations, you have to use eSIM. But I really prefer to use a physical SIM card for easy switching between phones. I hope this helps you see how you can move your eSIM from iPhone to Android. Thanks for watching.